And my name is Yong, and I'm a PhD student in University of Bonn. And today I want to discuss a recent work I did with my advisor regarding small field polynomial inflation. And here is the outline. I will basically cover two points. First, uh, some motivation for polynomial model. Then I will uh, discuss what are, what are the predictions. So first, why small field polynomial model? Um, for the most simple um, inflationary scenario, namely the monomial with phi power n, the prediction for tensor to scalar ratio turns out proportional to the, phi, uh, to the power n over ncmb, where ncmb is around 60. So considering the uh, most recent bond for for R, we say all the most simple scenarios with n larger than one are ruled out. So that's still potential are favored. Uh, for example, those potential with fraction power or one can introduce some non-minimal coupling. But today I'll, I'm going to focus on some alternatives. Namely, I will consider a, a polynomial instead of a monomial. And in order to avoid the transplanting issues, I will focus on, on the small field regime. And once we are in the small field regime, it, it is very reasonable to insist on, on renormalizability. In particular, if phi is some sector in a UV complete theory, then this potential is the most general and renormalizable potential. Here I expand the potential up to quartic term, and the cosmological constant term turns out to be negligible during inflation, and the linear term can be shifted away, so only three terms left. However, in both the very large and small phi regime, the potential are still too steep because the, the the power is larger than one and are ruled out by the bound for R. However, in some intermediate regime, this potential can be flight, mainly due to the contribution from the cubic term. In particular, there can be an inflection point if the parameters satisfy some condition. Indeed, uh, for this potential, an inflection point is the only possibility uh, to be consistent with the CMB data. So with an inflation point in mind, we can reparameterize this potential with three, three parameters. First, uh, parameter A, which is just the C over D, uh, gives the location of the inflation point. And parameter beta, if it is zero, we will have an exact inflation point. However, we, we want the, the potential to have some slope in order to be, against, uh, be consistent with the CMB data. Finally, the parameter D, which controls the amplitude of the potential, which can be constrained by the power spectrum. Here, here is a figure for the potential, and we will use the usual slow rule procedures to give predictions. Here, uh, we define these slow rule parameters, and in order to have the predictions, we also need a lot of parameter, namely phi CMB. So to that end, we introduce a dimensionless parameter, which basically describes how far phi CMB is away from phi naught. Well, phi naught is fixed. So with these setups, we can get predictions. First, let's look at the prediction for the spectral index. It turns out, um, because we know from experiments, the spectral index has to be less than one. So the delta CMB has to be positive. And this is the reason why in our model, the phi CMB has to be on the left of phi naught. And then let's look at the, the number efold NCMB, which correspond to the number efold when phi in the regime between phi CMB and phi n. For a case with beta is zero, because the arctangent 
infinity is half pi, which cancels this half pi, gives a zero NCMB. So this makes sense because um, if beta is zero, so there is an exact inflection point at final, in which case the inflaton just roll down, down, but stay at final forever, which means the inflaton cannot cross final and goes to the range between phi CMB and phi N, which means NCMB is just zero if beta is zero. Then we, we can also compute the tensor to scalar ratio, which is just a slope square, namely the beta square. And we can also calculate the running and the power by using the well-determined spectral index and the power and take some number e fold uh, NCMB around 60. We can fix the three model parameters. With these three model parameters, we can get prediction for the next determined parameter R and alpha. Of course, a prediction has to carry some errors. To that end, we will consider some deviation for these model parameters around the central values. And here, here is the general result. We say if we consider the central value with NS around 0.96 and NCMB around 60, the, the prediction for R is unfortunately too small to be detectable. And here is a prediction for the wrong name. If, uh, if we consider the central value with NS along this line, with NCMB around 60, we see the alpha is of order 10 to minus three, which is hopefully detectable in the future. And with these model parameters, we can now calculate uh, the inflaton mass and the inflationary scale. Uh, we, we say both the inflaton mass and the inflationary scale are actually determined by a single parameter, namely the location of inflection point. So once the, the parameter space for final is known, all the model information are known, including the model parameters and the predictions. So now the question is, what are the parameter space for final? Yeah, because we are considering small field regime, the upper bound is just one in Planck and Unique. So the most relevant question is, what is the lower bound? In order to answer this question, I have to briefly discuss reheating a little bit. So reheating corresponds to a phase where inflaton oscillate around the potential minimum and transfer energy to some doctor particles. Here we consider the inflaton transfer either fermions or bosons where some trilinear coupling. So once the decay channel is fixed, we can write down the uh, decay rate. Well, the M5 is just the inflaton mass. Then we can estimate the reheating temperature. And by imposing the reheating temperature, by imposing the BBN constraint on the reheating temperature, we can get a lower bound for a coupling. And before I move on, I want to leave some remark uh, regarding preheating. Uh, indeed, once we are considering some uh, trilinear coupling, for example, the, for the boson case, there can be some taconic uh, instability effect, which correspond to something called taconic preheating. However, in our case, this effect is negligible because uh, the doctor particle phi prime has a sizable self-interaction. This self-interaction will give rise to a positive uh, effective mass, which will cancel the negative effective mass, making preheating less effect efficient in our scenario. And for the fermionic uh, decay case, um, the poly blocking making the preheating also not efficient. So our estimation for reheating temperature based on simple perturb perturbative decay is okay here. So we have worked out a lower bound for a coupling. Now the question is, what are the upper bound? Indeed, once we are considering some coupling between the inflaton and some 
on Dr. Particle, we have to make sure the loop corrections are under control. We have to make sure the loop corrections will not spoil the inflationary predictions. So because our inflationary prediction are based on the tree level results, we have to impose these conditions. Here, the delta V is just the one loop for common Weinberger potential. And for the fermion decay case, it turns out the most strong bond comes from the, the second derivative, which is shown by the red Dyson line here. So above the red Dyson line, the loop correction are dominated, which we do not want. And below, below the, the blue line, the reheating temperature is too low. So we say uh, the light blue region is the or not parameter space. From this, uh, from this parameter space, we can get the lower bound for final, it's around 10 to minus five. And similarly for the bosonic decay case, the most strong bond come from the first derivative. And uh, here the light blue region is allowed from space. It turns out in both uh, in either fermionic decay or bosonic decay, the lower bound for final is around, is all around 10 to minus five. So we have get a full parameter space now. And once the prompt space for final is known, all the model information are known. Yeah. Okay, now let me briefly summarize. So in this talk, I have briefly uh, shown a point, very simple polynomial model, which can fit data very well. And this model uh, contains only three model parameters. Indeed, this, all these three model parameters are determined by a single parameter, final. And this, this model unfortunately predict too small tensor to scale ratio, like some other small field models. However, the prediction for the running is hopefully testable in the future. And we have also worked out a parameter space for final by considering the reheating uh, constraint and the loop corrections. It turns out the lower bound for final is around 10 to minus five. So we have get a full prompt, full prompt space for final. So once we know the parameter space for final, we say all the model parameters are known, also the predictions are known. And there are also some implications for, from this simple inflation model. We found the inflator mass can be as light as uh, 100 GeV. And for comparison, I just want to mention for the usual single term uh, monomial model with quadratic uh, um, inflationary scenario, the inflator mass has to be around 10 to 13 GeV. So you see there are 12, our model, for our model, the inflator can be uh, to, 11 orders of magnitude lower than the UR quadratic model. A larger feature is our inflationary scale can be as low as one MeV. So the, the moduli problem or some overproduction of gravitational can be resolved uh, in our inflationary setup. Um, so I think this model is um, very simple and also it's very uh, easy to use because it's uh, it's renormalizable. I think it's uh, very simple to embed in into some well motivated BSM scenarios to resolve some dark matter or biogenesis problems. So I think this is all I want to share with you, and thank you very much for your attention.